products. Hi, this is Mark Hope. Has out-of-control inflation, gas prices, and grocery costs wrecked your wallet? Then check into automated day trading with Trading Made Easy. Trading Made Easy has spent five years helping people put cash in their pockets with their simple-to-use day trading software. So if you're ready to leave that 9-to-5 job behind, visit TradingMadEasy.com or call 800-971-4160 to sign up for a free live training seminar right now. That's TradingMadEasy.com. When it comes to having the right attorney in your corner, you want to have a proven winner on your side. And Russell Dutch Boyd of VegasCouncil.com knows how to win in Las Vegas. Boyd graduated at 18 years old from law school and is also a three-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner. And no matter what legal challenges you're facing, Boyd will help you through it all. As a litigation attorney, he covers multiple areas of law, including personal injury, business law and startup, cyber law and crypto clients, and whatever else you might need to navigate the legal waters of Las Vegas and beyond. Just visit VegasCouncil.com to set up your free initial consultation today. That's Vegas, C-O-U-N-S-E-L dot com, and let Dutch Boyd help you win today. Once again, that's Russell Boyd at VegasCouncil.com. One oh one five FM, seven twenty AM, K Don, the talk of Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's bring on the tag team of Andrew Fish Fame, Joe DeFalco, and your host, Mark Hoke. Oh, yeah. Ring that bell. Ding, ding. I am ready to rock and roll, baby. Let's do it. The Mark Hoke Show on KDWN 101.5 FM 720 AM as we head into our second hour of pro wrestling news and entertainment. I am the aforementioned one, Mark Hoke. Thanks for being with us. Andrew Fish Fain sitting me. across from me. And uh, I mean, I, Joe, we're gonna get you in the in the studios. Uh, you know, I'll send you an address. We gotta we gotta get you in the studio with us sometime. We miss you. Well, you know, start the show a little later, and I'll be there. Well, I wish I could, but you never know. Never know. Times change. Yeah, you should have that kind of juice by now. You know, make <laughs> demands. <laughs> well, you know, throw your weight around. Got yeah. Enough of it. Yeah, they need to acknowledge is, you. That is very true right now. I got it. You know, I was thinking about taking Joe up on his offer at FSW to come down and hit the ropes a little bit. You know, you got you. You know, you got to fill in. Sometimes you got to produce. You know, because you know you're you're the guy who's always there. I. You, know, you should be able to get you know a little benefit out of it. Like, hey, I want to do this. You know. Well, you time know, to tell him to talk to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll conversate with the bosses. All right. I got to talk. I got to talk to those guys. Well, the times are a changing. That is for sure. But uh, <laughs> to say the least. But when does that start? The the new crew. We'll 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 we'll, we'll talk about it later. Okay. We'll talk about it later. But anyway, um, but I, before we get into all the fun stuff that happened on AEW, including the match of the week and full gear coming up. I, I wanted to lead off this hour. We we teased this a little bit, and I know that some people will cringe when I start talking about this a tad, but the NWA had a card last night. Uh, of course, you all know the National Wrestling Alliance, nowhere near its former glory, but a couple titles did change hands last night. As uh, first, I want to congratulate the son of Ricky Morton of the Rocket Roll Express. Kerry Morton won the NWA Junior Heavyweight title last night. So good for him. And the new NWA champion who knocked off Matt Cardona and Trevor Murdoch last night is Tyrus. No, nobody wants to congratulate him. Well, I just did. Tyrus is uh, the new NWA champion, of course, the yeah. former. I, it was Cameron dancing? No, I don't think Cameron was there. But, you know, of course, the former Funk Funkasaurus and Brodus Clay in WWE. And one of the co-hosts on was actually the number one late night talk show, Gutfeld on 
Fox News uh, leading the way. But the reason. Maybe that's the reason why they put the uh, the belt on him because it has nothing to do with his wrestling, his politics, or his uh, you know the way he speaks to women. Yeah. So Tyrus is your new NWA champion. But the the main reason I wanted to bring up the NWA is they're about to lose their big gun. Nick Aldis, of course, the longtime NWA champion, uh, working under Billy Corgan. I has run into a dispute with, with said promoter and has been suspended and his contract is running out in a couple months and Nick Aldis is going to be a free agent and of course everybody's January first he's become a free agent. So yeah, somewhere around there. So Nick Aldis who you know, if you haven't seen Nick, I think the last like really big match that everybody got to see him in was the first uh all out show where he and Cody Rhodes wrestled. Uh, for the NWA title, and Cody won that, and um, of course Nick got it back. But but that was but Nick is really you know, recognized as probably the top wrestler out there that hasn't been in WWE or AEW yet. And I'm curious to hear you guys' thoughts as to uh, you know where Nick Aldis should end up because he he is very good. There's no question about it. And uh, of course, he's married to Mickey James, which doesn't hurt either. The pr- the problem is both a and, and we've gone over this ad nauseum. Both the AEW and WWE rosters are a little bloated right now. Oh, I would agree so with that. So he doesn't necessarily fit in anywhere. Well, but I but I think that you could you could make somebody fit who's good enough to fit. The problem with Aldis, and you know. He's going to go from what one train wreck to another, from Corgan to Tony Khan. You know, Aldis. From what I've known from people who know him, he you know he takes things very seriously, and you know the NWA thing. You know, he was great for the you know fifth rate company, but he's not a draw, and he 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 acts like he's the next Ric Flair. You know, and he was great for the NWA, but, you know, they're wrestling in front of 500 people. Yeah, I mean, the NWA crowd's certainly nowhere near. So, uh, I mean, his value, his opinion of his value is way higher. I think he could be successful, but, okay, if WWE wants to grab a guy from the NWA, then grab Matt Cardona. Yeah, that would be be a pretty good move, to say the least. on fire, and it's like, He's he's got the internet buzz. As good as Aldis was, my kid was always trying to be like, oh, we could have uh, Nick Aldis defend the NWA title at the FSW show. And it's like, for the price that he is, he's not going to draw the type of crowd. You know, will he give you an interesting match? Will he give you a good storyline? Is he good on the mic? Absolutely. But I just don't, even when he was Magnus in, in, in Impact, I don't think he's ever had a time where he's been a champion where he's gone, but he's never moved the needle in any way that it was like, oh, this is the guy we got to have. What I'm, but what I'm, what I'm curious about with the the draw for Aldis, I think there'd be more of a curiosity factor. I don't know how long it would hold up, but I I have a feeling that people would want to see him. And I, and one thing that you know, if you've noticed, for example, with Triple H. You know, is starting to was starting to run pieces about the U.S. title and and going back in the the history of the NWA with with the U.S. championship and I and I kind of wonder if that would come into play and the, the hype of bringing Nick Aldis into WWE. You know, I I would be intrigued to see it. You know, like I said, I don't know how it would how it would go, but you know, I I think I think it's a good possibility. Fish, what do you think? I think it'd be a great possibility, but again. You know, we're having issues trying to figure out where Bray Wyatt fits in right now because obviously he's got to fit in in a, in a upper echelon, upper echelon program. Aldous would have to be not quite on that level, but close enough. Where do you? Where does he fit in? Well, you know, maybe a U.S. He's title feud. Also, he's high maintenance. Yeah, <laughs> he's not coming in and wants to start at the bottom. You know, he's forty years old, forty-two years old. I don't even know, but he's a guy who. Again, he's been a champion everywhere he goes. He doesn't want to go to a place where, you know, he's going to be maybe on TV this week or maybe not for three weeks. 
And I don't think he could do that in WWE. And as we know with AEW, he's got a little bit of history by doing some stuff with, with them. Now, you know, the thing becomes the, the relationship that he has with, with, with Tony Khan. Yeah, this will be intriguing to see where he does eventually go. Or maybe they work out the differences and he stays with the NWA. We'll find out. But Yeah, that don't seem like it's happening anymore. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't. It, it sounds pretty bad, but we will. Billy Corgan seems to just be the, the opposite of the fixer. Yeah, I mean, one thing that I just can't understand about when you have when you have something like the NWA World Championship, which of course was on par with the WWE Championship you know, back in the eighties and early nineties, Harley that, Race is turning in his grave seeing Tyrus as the champion. I'm I'm sure he's yes, not. He is. Well, there's been a lot of guys that have held that belt since the NWA broke away from uh, WCW and Impact. I I just I just can't understand why you can't do more. I mean, Joe. I, I mean, if Joe, if you had the NWA, I I know you would be drawing more than five hundred people to a show. Well, my goodness, you you know, Aldis at least presented himself as an NWA champion. Trevor Murdoch, Tyrus. It's like you know the. It, it's like. Out of shape guys who can't really go. I, I don't get it. And it isn't like Tyrus is magnificent on the microphone. And same thing with Trevor Murdoch. It's like, yeesh, then put the belt on Masters then. At least he looks like a million bucks. Yeah, that like, is true. I, 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 I don't get the why they're so enamored with Trevor Murdoch. It's like he's not Harley Race's uh, cousin. It isn't like there's this history with Trevor Murdoch who anybody who remembers him, if they do, from WWE, he was a B-level guy in a tag team with Lance Cade that were pretty decent. But that was about it. And I met Murdoch at CAC. He's a super nice guy. But that's the face of the company who's now passed on down to Tyrus, who a lot of people hate his show on Fox when he had it. Like so, he is a polarizing character who ain't that great in the ring, and he, you know, I, I have no knowledge of why the NWA would go that route. I don't know. I don't. I don't see it at all. I think it's horrendous. I mean, if, if you're going to do anything, shouldn't Matt Cardona have won the championship? Not if Matt Cardona is going to be leaving to go to WWE or somewhere else. And and I have a feeling that's going to happen. I really do. I mean, they're they're already talking to Chelsea Green, his wife. So I I have a feeling Matt Cardona is going to end up. And there, there's rumors. You, you know, you're talking about war games. There's rumors that Chelsea Green is going to show up and be either the fifth member of Damage Control or one of the uh, members of the Face Group. Yeah, that would be fun. And and just for a little history, if you haven't known what's been going on with the NWA since they split away from everybody, just to list some. Adam Pierce was the champ. Yeah, Adam Pierce was a, a multiple time champion. Of course, Adam's doing the authority figure bit in WWE. And they've kind of pulled back on that, too, which I'm glad. Brent Albright, Blue Demon Jr., Colt Cabana. Colt um, Cabana, yeah. Yeah, um, I remember there was a whole turmoil when Marquez was running it, uh, where they were trying to put the belt on uh, the Sheik guy who runs PCW in California. Man, there was some heat back then. Yeah, and the, the Sheik, that guy did win the championship for a little while. Uh, Rob Conway, uh, Tim Storm, then you had like Aldous Cody, Aldous Murdoch, Cardona, and Murdoch, and, and then Tyrus. So not exactly an all-star list. Yeah, but they're not a no, who's who. No, but, you know, you I, wish, I wish Joe would, Joe should buy the NWA. You, you deal with the hand, you, you play the hand you're dealt, I guess. Yes. So. No, I, wouldn't, I would definitely wouldn't buy the NWA. It's not worth the paper that it would be written on because there is no value to the NWA because it's not Ric Flair's. But I'd be more than happy to show Billy Corgan how to actually run a company in terms, in terms of booking it. Called out. There you go. There you go. So Tell I, him it's I mean, not 1979. Nice little Smashing Pumpkins reference. There. You know, nice. I'll bring Ronnie Garvin back, brother. Well, Wildfire Tommy Rich. There's a, you know, the, 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 
the last true NWA heavyweight champion, Ronnie Garvin, the Rod Garvin stump. <laughs> you know, but that's the thing with the NWA, a lot of history to draw on, and they do it with the Rock and Roll Express and stuff like that. And you know, they gave Rick Ricky and Robert yeah. one more reign. You know, just Midnight but, Express. Now that's the team. Yeah, but so so just wanted to bring up that NWA stuff before we <laughs> dig into what's going on in AEW. Match of the week this week on Dynamite. Ain't no question right, about Cage. that. No, Ugh. not the cage didn't wrestle. Great cage is wrestling well, oh, he, but he's not, yeah, they even got a win. I'm shocked. You know, I and we're gonna we're gonna get to that. But big great match with Sammy Guevara and uh, Brian Danielson. I thought pretty well done. I know Fish, you even enjoyed I, that. I, I was very pleasantly uh, surprised. Not surprised because it's Brian Danielson and he always puts on a great match. But Sammy Guevara really showed how great he can be. Yeah. And, and I thought the match was really well done. Sammy threw the first fall to just beat the hell out of Danielson, which was pretty cool. Yeah. You know, interesting strategy. Fall behind, but win the second fall because you... Didn't they do that in the Karate Kid? Yeah, well, take a point, lose a point. Take yeah, a point, lose a point. Take a point, lose a point. Yeah, but but that was you know, but that was a great match. I I, I really enjoyed that, and of course that starts into the the setup for full gear coming up. Uh, you yeah, know, we had some other interesting matches too on there. Let me let me just run down the, the one thing I didn't like that they did, and it's unfortunate was the Soraya promo. It was a very me 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 centric promo. Oh, I'm getting to that. But you know we had we had a fun match with FTR and the acclaimed uh, taking on the the guns and swerving our glory. glory, you know setting up the tag team title match. That was that was a pretty good one. I mean FTR just gets in the ring and is amazing. Yeah, you know, they are, and, and, and the acclaimed's wrestling really well. Too. Is, is FTR going to be leaving AEW or are they there? I, I I think they're there for a while. I thought their contracts were about to run out. I don't think so. I think they're there for a bit, but well, we can do some research on that. I I was surprised Ethan Page got the win on Eddie Kingston in the. Championship Another tournament, as, as, as did as did Brian Cage getting a win, getting a win against Dante Martin. They advanced, but uh, oh. and, and you and I talked about this before we went on the air. The problem with this is they knew that and now Ricky Starks was injured, and yet they put him in the tournament, and now he can't wrestle. Yeah, there's there is an interesting quandary there. I think they are planning to he, that he should be back this week. But one of the quarterfinals of that tournament has been delayed because Ricky Starks is supposed to wrestle Lance, Ar- Lance Archer, but Starks is still not cleared to wrestle. And they had to do a little little angle with Lance bouncing his head off a garage door to kind of cover that up. Uh, but uh, yeah, Band- They should have Archer win by forfeit. He wrestles Cage. Ricky Starks interferes, costs Archer the match, and then they can go right back to Archer and Ricky Starks, and Cage gets you know, fast-tracked into the finals. See, but I think that the reason that they're holding this up is I think Ricky was supposed to be the guy to win this tournament. I have a feeling that they were headed towards Ricky Starks and Ethan Page in the finals for this thing and having Ricky win this. That's well, because because there's no other explanation why they didn't just substitute. To me, anyway. So I would tend to agree, but like I said, my problem with it is when you know the guy is injured, you shouldn't be booking him in the tournament where this could possibly happen. Yeah, I mean, I can't debate that. But well, if they have a story behind it, not that we're convinced that Tony Khan could make a good story, but you know, maybe there, there's a plan in in place. You know, the fans, the average fan, doesn't know that Ricky Starks is still injured. Yeah, so we'll see how that tournament turns out. But you know, uh, but we got a good Bandito Rush match too. Yeah. Rush. You know, it's a lot of fun there. Those two guys are absolutely incredible. Who they won doing, that match? Uh, Bandito. Bandito, yeah, because so, I saw he just signed. So, hey, that, that'd that be a good match for Bandito. Like, you're going to have Bandito come in, he gets signed by AEW and lose to Ethan Page? Like, yeesh. Yeah. <laughs> you, you would have to imagine that if Bandito loses that match, there's going to be some shena- hijinks and shenanigans. Tom Foolery. With the, with the firm behind that. But uh, you know, but of course that's leading into all in aid, and of course our young friend Maxwell Jacob Friedman had another outstanding promo he did on a podcast. God, he's brilliant, man! Unbelievable, he's just brilliant, and it pains me big that he's favorite, brilliant. Big favorite on Bet Online. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna get to that too. But yeah, MGF 
you know, put on a nice promo. But another promo, and you and you guys mentioned this already, uh, Soraya in there with Dr. Britt Baker, which I still think it's a mistake for her first match to be back to be with Dr. Britt Baker. I think that that's, that's rushing that too. I guess they just wanted to make that match at full gear because now you're going to, the good possibility you're going to bury Britt Baker again, which I think is a very, very bad idea. And honestly, I didn't like the back and forth. So his promos have, to me, have not been good. I, I I just don't like the way she's talking in the ring. And no, she, it, it was, it, like it was it, really it was a very It was a very selfish promo. It was very me, me, me. It was almost a heel-type promo from a face. Yeah, it was strange because, you know, what Britt said about her was pretty spot on and then... And then it was just, it was, it's, it sounded very whiny to yeah. me. Oh, I battle with a broken neck, sweetheart. Yeah. yeah. I, I just, you know, okay. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't know if this is going to work out now. We'll have to see what she does in the ring now that she's cleared, but I don't know. I mean, Joe, what do you think about this? You need to bring in Brad Maddox to be your manager. Oh no. He went there. And Alberto Del Rio. Oh, oh. You know, it's like nothing buries anybody. If 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 Paige beats Britt Baker, they, you know, it's a cycle. So now she's not going to win for a little while, and then when they decide that she's going to win, then she wins. And it's like you, you can't bring Paige back. You obviously want to bring her back to a high pile pay per view. You're not going to wait three more months for the next one. So you you gotta kind of fast track a match, and then you know they're trying to push it, and you know it's a big deal. I guess, uh, to have her first wrestling match in, in years, of course she got cleared. Like WWE wouldn't clear her. It's the same thing with Danielson. And then he's going to leave. And then he, all of a sudden they find a concussion guy who's going to clear them. And it's the same thing. So now she needs to get a win. Well, who do you want to get her a win against? You know, she's not going to, you know, beat one of the random 20 uh, women on the roster. It would mean nothing. Now she's beating one of the high-profile women. And, you know, maybe Thunder Rosa comes back soon, and then, you know, Paige ends up being the, the champion down the line. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just not as excited about Soraya as I Thought I'd be. Yeah, I, that's that's a know. great way of putting it. I thought I would be excited, and like I said, and I said to you this when she came back, I'm still worried about her because she took a relatively innocuous hit from, uh, I think it was Nikki Bella, and that put her out again in, in 2000. I think it was 2018, and it wasn't a major bump that she took. And so if, she, if that's going to happen, I'm just concerned for her health. Yeah, me too. Well, you know, if the doctor, the clearer, turns out to be wrong. She could always hire an attorney. Oh, good Lord. Right? She always could do that. And, of course, that would be our good friend Dutch Boyd over at VegasCouncil.com. If you need legal help, he is your guy. The three-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner was where a lot of people know him, but they don't know that he graduated from the University of Missouri Law School at 18 years old. And he is a fantastic attorney, and he can help you out of any situation here in Las Vegas and, you know, wherever he can steer you the right way or specializes in business law, intellectual property, personal injury, crypto law, and whatever else you need. And all you got to do is mention us and you get a free consultation. I mean, what's, you know, what's to lose? So go to VegasCouncil.com, check it out. Uh, of course, complex problems do demand creative solutions. And that is our good friend, Dutch Boyd. So, there you go. Does that mean he started at like twelve? Yeah, he, Dutch is a brilliant dude. Doogie Hauser of the law. I mean, I have known I've known Dutch for my God, it's been a decade now since I was doing my poker show, and I'm telling you guys, he is a straight up guy, and you know, just a great guy. And we're gonna get him in the show sometime. I know he's been bouncing back and forth between here and Seattle a little bit, doing some things, but we'll get him in here. I promise. All right. Well, he found a lot of he's playing poker in Seattle. He found a lot of suckers up there. No, he's actually doing other businessy kind of things. So there oh. you go. All right, stick around for more. We're going to get our full gear predictions in. As I said earlier, there may be some money to be made on this card. So come back for more here with Andrew Fish, Fane, Joe DeFalco, and me, Mark Hoke, on the Mark Hoke Show on KDWN 101.5 FM, seven twenty AM. 
Tired of the same boring food when you're out for breakfast or lunch? I'm Mark Hoke, and I have an idea for a different place to go with unique food you're sure to enjoy, and that's Unique Eats. Take some time out of your busy day and stop on in to Unique Eats, featuring celebrity chef Dominic Tedesco and his friendly staff. Whether it's a great start to your day with one of Unique Eats' amazing omelets, or lunch with his incredible sandwiches, pasta, and award-winning pizzas, you'll be in for a fantastic dining experience that won't break the bank. Unique Eats also features there's a smoothie bar and full vegetarian menu as well. Plus, if you need catering, you can count on Unique Eats no matter what the occasion. So what are you waiting for? Get on over to Unique Eats at 3100 South Durango, Suite 100, open daily until 3 p.m. Call them at 702-992-3038 or visit UniqueEatsLV.com for their full menu and catering info. Break out of the same old routine and have a great meal at Unique Eats today. 1015 FM, 720 AM. Don, the talk of Las Vegas. You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas. The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. All right, and we are back on the Mark Hoke Show, the number one pro wrestling show in Las Vegas. And the multiverse. I didn't mention that earlier. Did you know that, Fish? I did. We are the kings of the multiverse. Except for Saskatchewan. No, we got that. And by the way, we have it down to a few states now. Is Finally, I went to college in North Dakota, North Dakota State. Finally got a download in North Dakota. Finally. Finally. Yeah, and I and I didn't call my friends or anything That's like that. That's because they still have 56K modems in North Dakota. Stop. They do not. Don't be a jerk. By the way, I saw there was a I saw a wrestling card up there. I forgot it was on it. It was a decent card. Some indie, indie promoter up there is putting something on. I was thinking about flying up. Go ahead. Yeah. During the middle of winter, that's a great time to go. Do you know when I went to North Dakota State, by the way, you know when I did my visit? Early December. Miserable. Stop ton of snow on the ground and yet you freezing, still went and i still went because just because how great the people are and, and the college is awesome well bison tipping bison i and we don't tip the bison we we become part of the herd man you you eat the bison um i i do think that bison are eaten up there bison burgers yes there are bison burgers they're tasty good stuff that's what the the, the dad said to the kid bison oh go away well, <laughs> well, we may be saying hello to a few old friends in AEW as the elite should be coming back here at full gear, I would imagine. They've been doing the whole Thanos thing on the promos. Death Triangle, is that who they're going to be facing? Um, they, there's not a match schedule, but they're going to be apparently showing up. So Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks look like they're going to be back. Are you guys excited? Not especially. Wow, okay. Joe's obviously not excited either. Uh, you know, Kenny Omega is like, you know, supposed to be the biggest deal in professional wrestling, and it's all the guys they brought in and then the Moxleys and then after that with the Danielsons and stuff. It it seems, you know, I've I seen Bischoff and a few people. Like Kenny Omega was that guy that is like, oh, when he gets to the States, I, I just – I don't see him being this big star, just like Adam Page. I, I don't know what it is, but, you know, maybe they haven't had, you know, they have that rabid fan base, AEW, and they love Kenny Omega, but Kenny Omega has not really broken out as this huge star to the masses now that he has this big platform on, on TNT, TBS, whatever it is. I think he's just he's just a guy. I don't see anything that's like overtly special. Yeah, I think I think part of the disappointment for Kenny was, you know, you were looking forward to seeing some of the matchups, and the one that got lost in all this. Can you make a CM Punk? Can you make a CM Punk? Everybody wanted that match and went down the dumper. But of course, Kenny and Brian Danielson match. It was an empty arena match. (laughs) A locker room match. It was. It was a locker room brawl. It ended up more of an East Steel. Chomp fest. But, I mean, you know, and, and the funny thing is, is Kenny Omega was at his, the height of his AEW powers when Don Callis was speaking for him. Yeah, and, and and the thing for Kenny was, if you didn't know, he's been out. Other than the suspension, he was out with a ton of injuries. I mean, he worked through shoulder, abdomen, 
knee. I mean, just he was. I mean, a, he hasn't really wrestled mess. in like two years. Yeah, it's been about a year. Yeah, it's been a good year and a quarter, somewhere in there at least. So his best run was uh, he, he never got injured wrestling the blow up doll or the eight year old girl. Yeah, you know, they she protected him well. It did happen. It did happen. So. Well, but but we'll be seeing Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks back here. It looks like a full gear. One person we will not be seeing back in full gear, and you, she was CM mentioned Punk? here, oh. no, Thunder Rosa. And there was just a quick update on her that she has said, of course, the AEW Women's Champion, still not sure when she's coming back. And Wasn't this, wasn't this been, the injury that everyone thought was just a work and that she wasn't, she's not really injured? That was yeah, the, she's showing them by not wrestling. <laughs> and I, I got to say, guys, I just think it's time to take the belt off of her. I really do. It's it's it, This is dragging out too Well, I, I told you how ridiculous I think it is to, to name someone interim title holder. They're the title holder. Tony Storm so is the title need, holder. It, it's, why it, would they need to take the belt off her? She's only the interim champ in the UFC. If a guy's gone a year and he, there's an interim champ, when he comes back, he gets a title match. Yeah, I mean, I I just don't understand why they didn't just do that and just strip the belt and be be done with it. I I heard a little of her, the podcast. She was on Busted Open, and because somebody actually said that she had mentioned me personally by name, I couldn't find it. They were talking about some indie stuff, but I wasn't able to see it. But in that, you know, checking out what was said, boy, she 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 was very very angry about you know all the Twitter people and you know the thing with with. Uh, Tony Storm and stuff, and if you're not happy with what happened, you know, don't complain to me, you know, that, that she was, like, all upset that, you know, Tony Storm was, was was bitching and complaining, and, man, she was very angry on that podcast. You know, she was a little, little upset that, you know, she'd also mentioned that when she had the that match of the year with Britt Baker, that she felt like Britt Baker overshadowed her and and Britt got all the credit in that match too, and you know she's, yeah, she seems to be a little, little touchy. So we'll, we'll see, we'll absolutely see when she gets back. But, um, but of course, full gear is coming up on Saturday. This is going to be a, a, some very interesting matches on this card coming up, and I think some agreed, which should be very well wrestled matches. So boys, we got we got to get our tickets and go down to the uh, go down to the theater. And watch this. Me invite some of our fans to come out and see us. But of course, on betonline.ag, the odds are up. And if you want to make some money and you want to help us make a little money too, because we'd certainly appreciate it, go to the Mark Hoke, go to markhokeshow.com, click on our banner over there. Uh, we got a couple of them up. And all you got to do is click on that banner and then you put in the promo it's code. The betonline.ag banner. You didn't mention the name of the banner. Yeah, there's a big one. It says bet on the WWE. There's pictures of everybody. Including the million dollar man's on this banner. But uh, BOL1000 is your code and you get a 50% sign up bonus up to $1,000. And you can bet on wrestling. You can bet on cricket. You can bet on football. I mean, go bet on the games today. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do on that site. It literally covers everything. Darts. If you took the Bucks minus three, you won. By the way, yeah, there you go. So a lot of lot of opportunities yeah. for you. So go just go to markhokeshow dot com and then click on the banner and enjoy yourself on betonline dot ag. Here are your betting odds. We'll start running down through these matches. And part of the reason I'm glad we did the talk about Thunder Rosa because the first match is on here is the AEW Interim Women's Championship match between Tony Storm. The current interim champion Jamie Hader, who is just ridiculously over, and guys, we basically got co favorites in this match. Tony Storm is listed at minus one thirty, and Jamie Hader is listed at minus one ten. Hader is really over right now. Who walks out with the interim title? Fish. I'm going to give it to Jamie Hader. She's way too over right now for them not to book it that way. And it's a shame for Tony Storm, but uh, I think Hader gets the win. Joe, what do you think about this? I'm okay with that. Okay, I I have a feeling Hader's going to win the title too. I really do. So, well, this rarely happens. The three of us all agree. Yeah, it does. But I, and I do feel bad for Tony because she just got put in a bad position. And next match is me versus Vandergriff. Oh. Vandergriff's a plus one eighty. Jamie Hader 
would kill you. I, I think uh, Vandegrift is, is a bigger favorite than Roman Reigns was over Logan Paul. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he is. Joe's booking it. He'd know. Uh, the <laughs> AEW World Tag Team Championship is on the line as the acclaimed will face Swerve in our glory. Swerve Strickland and Keith Lee, who appear to be headed for a split. <laughs> You feel like betting on the acclaimed, hey, it's only a minus 2,000 Jeez. for Swerving Our Glory, glory plus 700. I, I would imagine we're all in agreement the acclaimed will be walking out with the championships, gentlemen. Oh, yes. <laughs> Joe, I, w- I would assume you... You know, it's similar. It was kind of like uh, Zoe Stark. You know, if you challenge for the titles and lose, and then you get another title match, if you're not winning... Something's got to happen, but didn't they tease, you know, in the Battle Royal, Swerve and Keith Lee breaking up? I think it's a little premature to to break them up, but, I, you know, it is what it is. But we also heard that about the Street Profits, that they were breaking them up uh, 17 different times, and it never happened. Yeah, they've been teasing it a lot on AEW, so that that is going to happen at this one, I think. Uh, we have the Ring of Honor World Championship match. Four-way match here with Chris Jericho, the champion, taking on Brian Danielson, Claudio Castagnoli, and Sammy Guevara. Jericho is a minus 220 to retain. We've got Brian Danielson at plus 225, Claudio Castagnoli plus 400, Sammy Guevara at plus 1,000. And, of course, Jericho has been teasing for Sammy to do the right thing in this match. Maybe he'll do the wrong thing and make some people some money, or maybe not. Uh, Who walks out with the Ring of Honor championship? Jericho's not losing it. Okay. There's there's too much going on with Jericho and, and this whole taking down all the the Ring of Honor people. Jer- Jericho's not losing. Joe, would you agree with that assessment? Would I predict this match would be so much better in 2012? But you know, well, Sammy was just a kid then, so yeah, I'll take him <laughs> out of it. I'd rather see the other the other three guys uh, ten years ago. Yeah, th- this is still going to be a fun match. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this one. But yeah, I, it's like, it's like you got Danielson, and, you know, it's like Guevara is really the odd man out to me in, in that match. It, it's crazy, but, you know, Cesaro, Claudio, whatever you want to call him. Like, he again, it's, it's these guys, they get that initial quick run when they're in WWE, and then they kind of fall by the wayside. Yeah, so I'll stay with Jericho, too, but, boy, that would be fun if Sammy won the title. That would, that would flip some people out. Uh, we have the singles match between Soraya and Britt Baker. Soraya is a minus 700. Britt Baker is a plus 400. I think we kind of already mentioned it, but I would assume uh, Soraya is your pick to win. Yeah, the only way Soraya loses is if she gets injured, if she gets injured in the match. So, uh, well, you're just looking for thinking about pain for for her. Aren't I you? don't want her to be injured. I liked, I, I, I loved her in WWE. I thought Paige was fantastic, but yeah, she's not losing. Joe, the only way she's losing is if she uh, trips going to the ring and tears a quad or something. Yeah, or or you have some outside interference just to keep this thing going a little bit. Yeah, if think Brad about, Maddox came out, that'd be amazing. Oh, if Maddox and Woods showed up, okay, I'm done with that. Hey, I'm anyway. Del Rio. <laughs> wow, Shh. now we're really getting into it. Uh, steel cage match, and honestly, I think this is one where you might have a shot to pick up some coin. Jungle Boy Jack Perry against Luchasaurus. Jungle Boy is a minus 700, Luchasaurus a plus 400. I'm not sold that Jungle Boy wins this match. What do you think, Fish? I think they have to have Jungle Boy win the match. If you don't, you can't. It, 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 I mean, Luchasaurus has just gone over him every single time, right? Generally. Yeah. It, it, you, I think Jungle but, Boy, is, it, that, that's why this is where Jungle Boy gets his revenge and his, his impassioned promo on Wednesday was actually a very good promo. He's gotten a lot better on the mic, by the yeah, way. Yeah, he has. And I think he wins. I don't think Jason Priestley helps him, though. No. <laughs> Joe, what do you think about this one? Uh, I think there's not much upside on Luchasaurus, but they they seem to like the guy, but... Mm-hmm. Jungle Boy is like supposed to be the young stud, you know, he's the guy of the future, you know. You would think him and Sammy Guevara would be on similar paths, but Jungle Boy just kind of took a dive, and Guevara, despite everything he says and does, continues to get 
this high profile push that you think you'd give it to a guy like Jungle Boy, who seems to be a much more liked person in the locker room. But, you know, I can't see him losing there because if he does, then he's kind of done. Like, hey, I'm, where do you, where do you, where do you go with him if he loses? Yeah, yeah well, there's no place for him to go. See, my my reasoning that I think that there's a chance Luchasaurus wins this match is he's getting over too, and they're putting a lot of effort into Luchasaurus. Uh, I, you know what? I'm just going to go against you guys just for fun, and say the Luchasaurus somehow finds a way to win this match, and they keep the feud going. Because of course, we still got to get down the road to Jungle Boy and Christian. Well, yeah, obviously. who's still hurt. So. I'll, I'll take the I'll take the dinosaur, just for fun. I'll take the dinosaur. So isn't, pl- isn't it crazy how all those guys that are like fifty always keep getting hurt? Imagine that. <laughs> how how does that possibly happen? Speaking of guys fifty, Ric Flair and up. Oh, sorry. We have a tag team match as Darby Allen and Sting are taking on Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. Apparently, this combination uh, is carrying over. From Ric Flair's last match. Darby Allen and Sting are a minus 500. Lethal and Jarrett are a plus 300. I think maybe this is a chance to make some money too. Darby Allen and Sting win this thing? Or do does the Lethal and Jarrett combo get a little uh, bonus victory here? What do you think? I, I think they give it to, to Lethal and Jarrett because Jarrett made the joke about Braun Strowman, skinny red jeans, and the banana nose. That was, that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. But you you, you seriously like that? No, I, I I think Lethal and Jarrett will get over. Joe, what, you, what do you think on this one? Um, if I'm going to take an underdog, I wouldn't take Luchasaurus. I would take Jarrett and, and Jay Lethal. I think... Uh, lethal needs a spark somewhere. Yeah, but so the problem is that AEW keeps booking Lethal to lose. That's why I think that he would yeah. he wins this one. And, and and yeah, and that's the main reason. It's like he's one of the best workers in the world. And you know, I get it. Darby Allen and Sting. You know, Sting ain't taking the pin. But you know, if they want to continue some stuff, it's okay for Darby Allen to take a pin against. You know. Jay Lethal, maybe he gets a spark because Jeff Jarrett's by his side or whatever, and you know it's a good way to elevate some people. So, and I'll and, take the plus three dollars on somebody. Yeah, and and that group, you know, with uh, you know Sanjay Dutt and Saddam Singh, I think they they need to do something to get those guys going. I think that's why they put Jarrett in there. I'm taking Lethal and Jarrett to win this match. So, wow, we we've been just about agreeing on everything. Yeah, we have been. Jade Cargill is going to be defending the TBS championship against Nyla Rose. Jade might actually get the uh, big hold on. Right there, big upset. Nyla, Nyla's been doing some good work in this, but Jade Cargill also a minus 2,000 against There's, Nyla yeah, Rose. Yeah, no money to be made here. Move along. Nothing to see here. <laughs> nothing to see here. Jade Cargill's going to smash her. I would assume you'd agree with that, Joe. Yeah, because they're going to try to set up the the streak versus the streak, and they're going to do Jade Cargill versus Goldberg, and that's what oh, they're going to say Jade Cargill versus, versus the Undertaker. The Undertaker. <laughs> no, the real streak. There you go. So Cargill wins that one. Now we get to the main event, and this is a very intriguing match. MJF and John Moxley wrestling for the AEW World Championship. Of course, Mox is the champion right now. MJF comes into this one minus 700, Moxley plus 400. Do we finally see the coronation of MJF here at full gear? Because I think there's a possibility they may hold it off, but we'll see. Fish. This is the problem. I was talking about this before. Is, you know, if you have Moxley lose, then his reign is very unspectacular. But... You can't build up MGF to be this this monster heel and this this amazing dude, and then have him lose either. And this is his big opportunity. So uh, you know, I'm gonna go with MJF, but it doesn't do any doesn't do any good to Moxley to lose this one. Joe, is is it MJF's time? Uh, no, it was his time a lot earlier. So it's like finally putting it on him. I, I think they kind of got no choice. He, it's kind of like with Goldberg back in the day with Hogan. It was like, you know what, maybe maybe he isn't ready, but they've given everything the opportunity, and then MJF had the issues with CM Punk and all this other stuff. It's like 
in reality, it's what the fans want. As much as they love Moxley, you know, fresh face. And, you know, there's a reason why they're my, he's minus 700. Some, some, somebody has some information. Yeah, I, I would lean towards MJF winning this match. But I wouldn't be surprised if something crazy happened. You could, you could kind of do a double turn on this, too, if you wanted to. That could be interesting. I mean, so, you know, of course, the you had the issues with MJF and the firm, the, a lot of potential for some outside interference, but you, crazy you stuff can't, going you can't, on there. I don't think you could turn MJF, MJF face. I don't think you could either, but there's been a lot of internal talk over to AEW that they want to. He doesn't want to. I don't I think he did. he's going to be more of that anti-hero thing, that people are going to like him regardless of the situation. See, and I and I almost wonder if you don't hold off a little bit on this, and you do something like a a, a double turn where Mox, like Austin Hart, yeah, like where Mox gets interference from the firm who's mad, supposedly mad at MJF. There, I, and there, I think the firm situation is going to play into this one way or the other. Either MJF set the whole thing up when he got attacked by them, and they're going to just decimate Moxley one way or another, and MJF's going to win the title. Or Mox ends up with aligned with those guys and screws over MJF, and now you've got MJF even more of a hero, and you keep the chase going, which is always good for business when the the face chases the heel. What about the third option, which is Mox aligns with MJF against the firm? Mm, I don't know. I don't know about that, but there needs to be a decision. MJF really this. wants friends. Well, no, because because if Mox is if if Mox is going to help the firm, then he's almost turning his back on the the, the combat club. Yeah, it's it's going to be, you know, it, it's an interesting situation. But I, I'll I'll lean, I'll take MJF, but don't be surprised if something goofy happens in this match. If, if he wins but doesn't win the title, something along those lines. But you know, I like I said when when you ever you have a, somebody popular in a chase. It always yeah, but I I think you're more likely to see the swerve the other way, which is that this is all put on between him and the firm, and the firm are gonna you you're gonna they're, they're gonna come out and you're gonna think uh oh the firm's gonna screw MJF and cost him the title, and in fact they are still working together. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. But I, that, I look at it as Moxley was wasn't supposed to win the championship anyway. True. So you know, good. Thank you, thank you for your service. Go on that vacation that you 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 were supposed to have. Uh, take a couple couple months off, but, and let's let uh, MJF ride into the sunset. Yeah, t- the take the vacation, going. but leave your wife. We need her here. Yeah, <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for her, the the place would have imploded. Greatest hire of all time. Just ask. Him. There you go. So, full gear Saturday night on your pay-per-view, and, of course, uh, you can see it at movie theaters, too, which I recommend. And it's, it's a, a week week before Survivor Series, War yeah. Games. So we got, we've got we got another great week of wrestling coming up. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot great. of fun. Great, FSW. Yeah. All odds on Sunday. Yeah, I can't forget that, too. Is Vander Griff wrestling? Yes, he is. He's going to be wrestling Davey Richards and Funny Bone in a three-way. Wow. Be careful of a run in there. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, well, we didn't, didn't need a fourth guy fish, so if you come down to the school, you know, we should be able to get you ready. Send Buddy will get you ready in a couple of days. I, I'm teasing a run in there for uh, to, to, to trip up Vandergriff. Oh, no. The only you thing you might do is... Yourself. Yeah, the only thing you might do is trip Vandergriff, go up the aisle and get your face punched in. Right, but yeah, and that's going to be... He's running scared. But that's going to be a great card, too, so if you want to get tickets uh, to see Against All Odds with uh, Joe's... Joe's card coming up here on Sunday, the twentieth. Go to fswvegas.com. And there, there is no better bang for your buck in the wrestling industry than going, oh, no. than going to watch FSW. Great time! You get VIP package, you can meet wrestlers, and, and they're just and they, they put on amazing shows. Yeah. They really do. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that because Joe's here on the other on, on the line. I have a blast. I mean, yeah. I, I love going to those cards. I love Danny Limelight getting crushed by a six year old. That that's, was fun. that's always fun. Did I, I, real fast, I'll tell that story because Danny. Danny dissed this little kid on the front row at the at the last one, and then when Danny went at over Mecca? to give him his head at Mecca, when he went over to give him his headband when he had to wrestle again, the kid flipped him off. <sighs> it was fantastic. That's and, beautiful. And Danny's awesome. Danny's another guy that should it's, be out. It's only soon. FSW you can watch uh, Scarlet give a code red. There you go. So there guys, go. thanks for listening. We do appreciate it. 
podcasts available, markhokeshow.podbean.com, and a ton of outlets. I just signed up for a few more. So just do a search, check that out. Of course, follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show, Facebook, The Mark Hoke Show. Sign up, give us a like, give us a follow. Fish is at uh, The Fish 1969, Joe FSW Vegas. Thank you so much, and we will see you next week on The Mark Hoke Show. Have a great day, Las Vegas. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show. Like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show. And visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show. And download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today, and thanks for listening.